Hey, what's up, people? Piz out here, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about Scream Factory's newest collector's edition Blu ray release. This for John Carpenter's sci fi horror masterpiece, The Thing. A couple of disclaimers I want to touch on before I dive into this review. However, number one, if I sound congested, if I sound wheezy or raspy, I suffer from horrible sinus and allergy issues, and whenever we have a transition from season to season, it just kicks my butt. So I apologize for that in advance. Number two, if you hear the sound of what sounds like chainsawing, my neighbors, for some odd reason, are outside chainsawing something right now. But I wanted to get this review out there before this Blu-ray drops, as the kids say, so... I'm going to go ahead and just kind of uh, just bear with me. Please bear with me. Also bear with me because this is only going to be a review of this Blu-ray release. Now to cover all the extras on this release and to do the kind of review that this movie richly deserves, I'm talking about a 30, 40 minute video. However, just touching on the extras on this release... We're still going to have a 15, 20 minute video, so strap yourselves in and we'll go ahead and get the ball rolling. This is a collector's edition Blu-ray release from Scream Factory. And as with all of their collector's edition Blu-ray releases, you get a nice slip case with some newly commissioned artwork. And on the inside sleeve, it's reversible to show the original poster art there. So this is a two disc release on disc one we have got a new 2k scan of the interpositive supervised by director of photography dean cundy the movie looks great the movie sounds great picture quality sound quality are both superb on this release we've got a new commentary by dean cundy we've got an old commentary with john carpenter and kurt russell we've got theatrical trailer and teaser trailer we've got tv spots radio spots and steel gallery that is disc one Disc two, uh, the menu is broken up into three chapters. You have interviews, featurettes, and more of the thing. Now, under the interviews category, the very first thing we have is a brand new 28 and a half minute interview with John Carpenter conducted by Mick Garris. It's called Requiem for a Shapeshifter. Carpenter discusses his love for the original thing, how the film came about, uh, working with a major studio for the first time. Uh, Carpenter discusses how Universal had been working on a reimagining of the thing for quite a while and that Toby Hooper had actually uh, taken a crack at a script at one point. Um, Carpenter talks about um, his reluctance initially toward doing the movie and how he was able to get so much creative control over the project, despite it being his first studio film. Of course, he talks a lot about working with Rob Bottin, who was only 23 at the time he did those amazing creature and makeup effects for The Thing. Wow. Um, he talks about uh, how <laughs> you know Rob Bottin spent so much time on the creature effects and makeup effects and what have you, that they went way, way over schedule uh, he talks about shooting the film in widescreen the music in the film the locations uh, and carpenter talks about his thoughts on the finished product and how he feels it's it, it's truly a john carpenter film it's his proudest moment as a director very very nice very very informative interview with john carpenter great stuff there um, we have got the men of outpost 31 a 51 Minute featurette featuring interviews with Keith David, uh, Wilford Brimley, David Clennon, Joel Polis, Thomas Waits, Peter Melody, Richard Mazar. Um, they all discuss how they got cast in the film, what the casting process was like, uh, the fun atmosphere on the set, um, the endless discussions they had on, uh, you know, when did your, when do you think your character got uh, you know, taken over by the thing, and how do you think your character got taken over by the thing, and what do you think it's like being taken over by the thing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, they talk about working together and, and rehearsing as an ensemble. Um, they talk about a, uh, a bus ride to the set that nearly killed them all, which is an interesting story. Uh, they also talk about how they were kind of disappointed in the release of the film and how Universal really just more or less kind of dumped it with very little marketing and stuff and, and how poorly it was received by the critics. Yet, of course, now it is a bona fide classic. So very nice, very informative uh, interviews with those guys. 51 minutes. Very, very nice. 
we've got a new um, <clears throat> interview with the editor Todd Ramsey it's about 10 minutes it's called assembling and assimilation uh, he discusses some of the bad blood that developed between John Carpenter and the studio over the ending and how he feels like Universal didn't market um, the film the way that they should have because of that Universal wanted a happier ending John Carpenter wanted the ending that we got and because they butted heads Universal said well screw you we're not going to market your movie. We're not going to really promote your movie. So, unfortunate there. But nice interview with him. Brief, but nice. Um, and we have got a 25-minute featurette called Behind the Chameleon, The Sights of the Thing. It's a multi-part featurette featuring interviews with uh, model makers, uh, miniature makers, members of the makeup effects crew, the creature crew, animation effects crew, a lot of behind the scenes, how they built the sets, a lot of production design, um, how the model builder, really, she took pictures of everything and the models, and she still has a lot of these small models, they look impeccable. So when you watch the movie and you, like I, I some of those scenes, I had no idea that they shot with miniatures and you look back on it now, even now on this Blu-ray, and they, it still looks absolutely impeccable. So really nice feature right there. Uh, moving on, we have got um, Sounds from the Cold, a 14 and a half minute interview um, with uh, Alan Howarth and David Lewis. Excuse me, about the sound design of the film, how Alan Howarth worked with John Carpenter to kind of fill in some of the, um, the composing blanks that any of them didn't quite finish or if they needed um, kind of a filler part um, how he and John Carpenter worked on those pretty interesting uh, interviews there uh, we've got between the lines an interview with author Alan Dean Foster it's about 15 minutes long he wrote the novelization for um, uh, the thing he's also wrote novelizations for pale rider alien alien starman transformer star wars the force awakens on and on and on and on um, he discusses um he discusses the the novelization he discusses the uh, the original novel who goes there which the thing was based on um he discusses how he worked with the original script to create the novelization and how he worked from a different version of the script than the one that they actually shot. So the version that he worked on in order to create the novelization was an earlier script than the one that they had locked for shooting and the finished product. Um, and it had a different finale, as a matter of fact. So his novelization is actually different from... Um, the the film version and has a different ending so i thought that was pretty interesting um, next up under the feature ets category we have got the art of mike plug it's a little over 12 minutes it features the beautiful storyboards that mr plug created for the film excellent beautiful storyboards we have got back in the cold just over 11 minutes it's a slideshow of images narrated by the webmaster of outpost 31.com in which he and a friend visited the shooting locations in Alaska and the tiny town of Stewart, British Columbia, where the cast stayed during filming. Very nice, very nice feature right there. Um, we've got five minutes and 19 seconds of outtakes, which are, of course, outtakes. We've got some vintage featurettes. We've got a 19 minute, 20 second vintage featurette, which features interviews with John Carpenter, Kurt Russell, Rob Bottin, uh, all of them taking, uh, all of them taken on the set. Um, or, well, actually, no, this these were well, some of these were taken on the set, some of these were not. I apologize, um, but they discuss working on the thing. Um, Carpenter and Russell discuss the TV movie Elvis. Russell discusses working as a young actor for the Disney Company, um, and his collaborations with Carpenter up to that point, which they'd, at that point they'd already done Elvis, they'd done um, Escape from New York, and now of course uh, the thing. Very nice there. Uh, we've got a, a vintage production reel which is sort of a truncated version, really, of the movie, which I thought was, was interesting. Uh, we've got some vintage behind-the-scenes footage, which is about two minutes of that. Um, we have got uh, annotated production archive, which is a lot of behind-the-scenes photographs from the thing. Um, the third category, more of the thing, we've got the network TV broadcast version of the film. 
Um, we have got John Carpenter's The Thing, Terror Takes Shape. It's a one hour and 24 minute feature length making of from 1998. It includes interviews with John Carpenter, Dean Cundy, Rob Bottin, Kurt Russell, Richard Mazur, Charles Hallahan, Stan Winston. Um, you have interviews with model makers, interviews with optical effects makers, the editor, <laughs> uh, the producer, several other cast and crew members, and you have lots and lots of behind the scenes footage as well. This is a very good um, vintage making of hour and 24 minutes. I do believe it was on the special edition DVD release that we got years ago, but very nice. Uh, we've got the making of a chilling tale, which is some vintage on-set interviews with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell. It's about five minutes and 14 seconds of that. Um, we've got the making of the thing, which is just over nine minutes. A lot of vintage on-set interviews with John Carpenter, production designer John Lloyd, and Kurt Russell. And that is all. But, needless to say... This is a loaded collector's edition for the thing. I actually got asked the other day um, by my buddy Claire, is this worth a double dip? Now, if you already have the other Blu-ray release of the thing, yes, this is absolutely worth a double dip. There is lots of very nice new extras on this release. The picture quality is is better than that blu-ray release uh, the audio quality from what i remember is also better from that release and you've got lots and lots of new extras and they poured it over a lot of the old extras as well this thing is loaded if you're a fan of the thing you are going to want to go out and pick up this blu-ray release i'll put a link in the description to go pick it up um yeah i can't recommend it any higher classic classic film if you've not seen john carpenter's the thing you're doing yourself a disservice i can think of no better way to introduce yourself to john carpenter's brilliant sci-fi horror masterpiece than with this scream factory collector's edition blu-ray it is worth it lots of stuff on here very nice release from the folks over at scream factory so if you've already bought this release, if you pre-ordered it and you got it early, please let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. Just share with me your thoughts on John Carpenter's The Thing, period, in the comments section below. Um, if you like the video, please leave it a thumbs up. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. They're also right around here somewhere. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. And the time, 13 minutes, not bad. Not bad. I came in under schedule, even sick, still on point. for you say hello to the internet jeremy hello to the internet